Hi guys and welcome to Joe's Camera. This is a follow-up episode of back at the studio after a visit to the Kalari into the desert to do some wildlife photography. So we're back in the studio and going through the process that all wildlife photographers normally do. You capture the images, some look at the images on the viewfinder and the laptop. They already start deleting where they are at the location to keep all the keepers or the, the would-be keepers and get back to the office or studio at some stage and then go through and then do some fine editing. That editing process takes on uh, various forms, like we've said in the previous programs. You would do the natural edits by, by doing the levels and, and saturation and, and vibrancy and, and contrast and, and crop it according to, to compensation rules. And most people know that in the field when you press the shutter and you look at the viewfinder, you already know, got a good idea of what the good images are and you work at that when you come home. This is more about the images that are forgotten after a couple of years. The images we go through now again was captured in... 8th of February 2017 and I haven't looked at them again and um, there's been new plugins on the market so uh, and our editing efforts and skills have improved and also our eye and, um, and mental condition change so so we look at the image is quite different after a couple of years in this instance four years then after we just came back from from the trip so I'll go through the images show some of the ones that that I'll show I'll scroll over the all the images so I don't just don't show the good images so through all of them and give you some idea of which ones we would pick and work at this would not be the composites or the special uh, fine editing that we do it's going to be touch up quick touch ups and where there's a fine art rendition or possibility for a plugin I'll go over to that the story about this program is the fact that some of the images hide themselves they don't comply really with all that good sharpness and so on when you initially edit and they might might have been images that you would have deleted uh, with the fine art plugins and black and white plugins and and some of the other creative ones some of that mistakes in the normal images can actually assist in in improving the artistic value of the image itself so we'll go through quickly scroll through them this is a follow-up on the previous episode. So I was actually capturing the the heavy rains that were falling in the distance. Uh, of course, it was very dark here, yeah, you can also see. And I was looking down at the Alp River Valley, and there's the, the natural road, and this is the dune road, and I'm sitting on the other side of the embankment of the dune road. What is the Iconquo? Yeah. Yeah. Second dune road. Yeah. The second dune road, or Comqua water roll. And I'm sitting on top to try and elevate myself to get to this level to actually see the rain. If, I, if you're down in that road, your angle up taking image from there would have been just that clouds and you wouldn't have seen um, that extra dimension and the rain actually falling. So I was actually sitting on top there capturing um, these images. And I had the tripod out the window, the two legs of the tripod out the window. And the next moment, this line actually touched. If you just go to the left here, that's the viewpoint that I had um, over the valley. And this rain is on that side. So this here is the, the embankment on the right-hand side that I was sitting on taking that image. Um, this line, quite a known line at that stage, and one of the last times we actually saw them, actually came down at... It, it had rained a bit over here and he started drinking on this very shallow pool of water and what I instantaneously did I took the wide angle and and actually um, put the camera out the window and captured it I was really close by I mean there was just on this side of the of the water and what I wanted is what I always wanted is some dramatic background and, and rain playing in the distance of this very arid dry Kalahari and that's what the lion normally does without the artificial water rolls that's what they concentrate on when when water falls in the road like this they would um, they would drink from pools in in the in the pans or in the sand and that's the only way they naturally in the old days millennia back after man-made water rolls that's how they got their water so this line uh, you can see it's green already so there has been some rain before prior it wasn't that good that it actually gathered water like here but 
nevertheless, it was a it was a well known line that um, was head of a territory before, and I loved I loved that scene. Of course, it's a skinny line. A lot of people don't get it. They don't understand the desert, and he's lying flat drinking. He's not standing up drinking. But you know, it's 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 part of the story of the Kalahari. It's arid. It's tough for the for the lions. There's only fifty percent of their diet is made up of small animals from porcupines down, and and they struggle. So so here he drinks of the small pool of water, and in the back there's loads of water being dropped. Um, so and then he looks up, but he's also got a tired sort of body. He, he doesn't look that. He doesn't look that great. The ears are not out. He's not really looking at me. He's not. I don't bother him at all. He turned around and he went there. We did a um, a composite of this where I've asked Horus to really try and do something with this image of here because I want that dramatized. I want that contrast to be pushed and. And the line may be looking out towards the left-hand side, not really what we want. We wanted to face into the dead space on the right-hand side. So um, not going into the detail of the edit, but this is the, the final product that Artis made with this image. Going on, still just um, the different hues that this see it starts giving a yellow sort of glow at the bottom as the sun starts moving underneath this. And then the next morning, with this overcast and rainy conditions, I woke up and just a few meters from here got this scene. And what got me from this scene is is because it had a quite a different light to it than in the Kalari. It had a mist around it and the gravel road and the dust and the gravel road sort of kicked up some dust I think that gave it this is the original um, raw image it gave it this this brownish tint in hue and and I couldn't choose if I drove forward and backwards I d d just got a different angle I didn't get the sun straight up and this camel thorn tree that grows skew like that so there's something in this that I could have of course not picked a better spot but um, if you had months to detect a, a better foreground, then yeah. But but I knew that there were flowers and the raw image. I could have done a composite, um, exposed it for there and for here. And there were some cat's tails that grew at the bottom here. And I, I liked the overall feeling. There's a couple of pigeons sitting sitting over there as well. And you can see that there's some cat tail and some flowers. I, I like the way that this camel thorn uh, is growing towards the sun over there. And that this C curve that the, um, the branches are making actually draws your eye into the center and then away to the contrast and so on. It is a bit messy with the branches, but that is typical Kalahari. Let's go to the raw and just show you that an image like that, that you would normally, if you look at it at a glance, you would have just deleted because it, it doesn't. But I, I remembered the feeling and hope we can do something with this in the raw all that was done with the raw is just the levels were just um just pushed or brought back in and and this is what it does it, it kept the colors of the mist and the clouds the brownish color of the mist that i haven't seen you can see that this is a raw image it hasn't been touched on the colors at all not even the saturation has been touched and you can see the the green you can see the pods on the camel thorn the pigeon sitting over there and there and you get some cat styles. So there's something to the image that is very Kalahari-like and then also some that's really not like the riverbed. And that's just the way that this branch over here is shaped. If it was a straight tree, it would have been typical Kalahari. But this year, the color and so on still remains very beautiful to me. So we open the raw and that's what it looks like. Look at the darks over here. So first of all, let's look at the blacks. And if you do the blacks, look at it, it's already, it brings out the black, some of the color. The shadow, if we do the shadows, look if we pull the shadows, how it, how it comes out. 
I want to maintain the contrast of some of that cloud. Let's push that saturation a little bit. Look what the deaze does. Because it's a lot of haze, the deaze darkens it on top. We don't really want it darkened to stay like it is. If we just touch the exposure. What it does, it burns out some of some of the sun, and um, to be even better, it'll be even better if you burn out some of the bottom and do maybe a composite and work on the top and and at the bottom. And what I want to show you is the magic of of the clarity button. In this specific instance, I'm just taking the clarity button and look what you what happens. You pull the clarity button. Um, and the clouds on top stay the same. If you did the same with the with, uh, saturation and with the shadows, it burns out the sky, but with the clarity button, the magic in this specific image, it brings out the greens and the flowers at the bottom and it balances the light. This is the image... That's exposed just from a different angle. It's quite interesting to see. Um, that image was done more from this angle to get the sun right there above this specific tree. If you look at the previous image, look at the sun. I've got this angle here. The sun is just above it there and we've got this dry dead tree in here. This one is this dead tree on here on the left hand side and just having a few meters to the to the left and look at the exposure that the camera automatically got this versus this. So the angle very important just that one specific angle that worked with the shot right into the into the sun waited for it. It, it stayed for a for a few seconds and then the sun was directly in the lens. These ones over here are just done to do a lot of composites. A few meters further at the entrance to Erika, or as you go up towards Erika Riz, this is the natural images, the light that we got. Look at that blues over there and the orange color that the sun's creating on these branches. Now, when you get this light, you can't really race around. You need to just capture it. And all I got in the foreground was this. Not all that pretty, but it, but it was the magic light that I wanted to capture in this instance for a record shot. Look at that blue with the three dimensions, the clouds close by, and the further clouds, and the even further clouds on that side. Hunting for foreground, that's all we got with the road. Second image more to the left because of this light over here. A slight rainbow that on the edit suite artist brought out very nicely and this was a serendipitous shot of a lightning strike as well and once again it's it's about the light we can work on the light and edit that but we're gonna skip that and carry on it's the image of Achterluni and it's done because Achtaluni is the only structure in the Kilari that's that's man-made and that represents um, a, a massive part of the history. And this funny cloud that has got on top here, and that's basically what the photo is all about: is the is the cloud and the cover that this cloud has got over Eric, um, Achtaluni. Now this one, if we if we look at the after learning images, it's all about the cloud on top of the house. There's another one over there. Let's take the one where the horizon is more straight. I'm going to go straight into the plugin and select a, bla select a black and white. It's, it's good for color, but the 
textures and the contrast of the clouds and the house, which is sort of dew or tritone because it's blue, white, and the brownish green. So if that is darkened, the sky, and that over there, it's, it'll be a good black and white. So let's see what it turns out. Okay, plugins opened up. That's the neutral image. And here you start getting a picture of, of what I'm talking about with the with the black and white, how it darkens the top there and this beautiful, that's overexposed that you don't want because you want the contrast. Look at the high contrast, the ghosty effect that it has, how high structure. Beautiful, it brings out the light on the greys and the, and the earth. Low key, just as good. That's a bit too dramatized. Grudget Indie Filter. A full dynamic range. Contrast and structure where there's extra contrast. A good fine art rendition. So that's an image that's an image that one could work. Um, but here, where there's color at Achtelone, where the rainbow is, um, we would go not for black and white, but for colors, because there are now colors um, that we can edit and exaggerate. And in this instance, the rainbow is the sort of C curve protecting the subject that we are, are looking at the house. And then the beams of light that streak out from this rainbow straight towards Achtelone is what we actually want. Let's take the color one and then test the color rendition or the color plugin and see what it does. We want to emphasize the rainbow a little bit and then specifically this beams is what's different to this image from a normal rainbow and it, and it, it, it is, creates a lot of leading lines within that C curve straight towards the house so it puts even more attention on the old historic structure that was built in the early 1800s for people that looked after the water rolls. So this is um, the color range. Let's pick the color range and see what it does. That would be the reds, but re look at that it doesn't bring out the, the, the curves, the beams of light going towards the house. That's the yellow green, the blue and the magenta. Look at the magenta, how it plays with the rainbow. Let's take another one, the brilliant warm colors, the neutral one, and increase saturation, perceptual saturation, cool colors, warm colors, where the sun sort of shines in and you got that. There's not much you can do with the crop because it is within that one third rule of year. This one goes through. And it covers that, it accentuates that, and it's a very nice image with a plug-in and you haven't even touched. The other image of this, this is the portrait, just to show you that there's different angles. This one works fine, and if we look at the composition of that image, what we'll do is... is um, there's nothing specifically that adds to the image over here, so you can you can crop it over there. To remove some of that dead space, and what you do have is you have this this uh, house right on the thirds, and this line of the rainbow also on the thirds. In the normal edit, we'll look at the levels. Bring that right back in, and the beams automatically comes out. We can look at touching saturation. And we can look at contrast. And that burns out the light again. So if the contrast is brought back, it looks better. Then we went on, let's carry on. This is a landscape at Askam, right opposite Askam. And 
we'll skip through. That's just the double kiss. So we'll skip through, staying in the lodge, some rainbow playing in the distance. And let's take another Achterluni image on another day where there's a lot of cloud. Previous one didn't have that much clouds. Um, what we'll try and do is to use a plugin on this because I can already see that the the grass in the foreground with the house relatively close to where it should be on that thirds over there, and then the two thirds on top will be the clouds that that will bring out a very good contrast with the specific plugin. Okay, so what we do is just I'll just crop it a little bit. And I'm going to take the color plugin. And this is what the one plugin does. It's on, on um, the contrast levels where the reds have been accentuated. This is the yellow greens, this is the blues, and that's the magentas. And the red looks, looks quite fine. Let's go back and look at the contrast range. Oh, sorry, that's the one we've been in. Brilliant and warms. It's a very nice one, it just dram dramatizes a little bit more. Also good. And once again, very easy to use the plugin. You didn't have to edit, unless you're a very good editor. We have some specialized edits on this, but this is for the sake of just looking at the easy way out. Let's carry on. Achterluni out, that's just some pics of Achterluni in the inside for those that haven't seen it. Some dramatic clouds again, something that I can't drive past in the Kalahari. These little jackals were playing and it was on 400 millimeter. it was a bit too far, although they're quite sharp overcast light and of course if you if one crop this you get a bit of an idea so it could still be used but the light's very it's actually very nice but direct sunlight would have pushed the shutter up and it would have been even sharper okay I'm going to skip all of those and get to the cheetah Cheetah is one of one of the times that the moment you see that on that horizon, you know from a fine art point of view you're going to make something of it. So these are sitting dead center on the horizon, very clean horizon besides the three thorn uh, shrubs that you got over here, very typical of the Calorian. And this is also, this is about 20 meters of the riverbank straight down. And what they do is they look down the river to the left and to the right. This one is looking towards the right, this one to the left. And what they do is they're waiting for a springbok approaching and then they would go down and on. So that's a very typical image of of the cheetah of the Kalahari sitting on the riverbanks. There's actually a third cheetah on that side that stood up. The tree is fine, um, but there's something not right. So this is close up, I want it to like that, close up. This tree, the leading lines of this tree point towards the cheetah, so that's that's all fine, it's not a it's not a problem. It's sitting in the shade and it's, you know, if if you just relied on, on this image, it would have been a good record image. But I know with that sky, open sky, there's something that you can do if you either do a composite and then at that moment, this one stood up and it mimicked and it copied a mirror image of that one and and now serendipity helps and and, and there we got an image that I knew at the edit suite later on something can be done even if it's a composite or just a black and white um, and to give some uh, artistic interpretation with a plugin at least. So the quick way and this is a typical example of what um, you could do with with just waiting, uh, spotting this. It it might have looked like a, a no a no image from the vantage point I was at, but this I'd never expected. But um, it helped me. Of course, you could 
copy and paste that in Photoshop, but it, it doesn't reflect and tell the story of the cheetah. This is a typical story where the che one cheetah looks downriver and the other one looks upriver, and they're there to hunt. The only reason they're sitting right on top and looking is for next prey item to come past and to kill them. So this is a typical reflection of what we want to show from the, the Kalahari cheetah. Just a quick fine art. Let's just cut some of the dead space at the bottom of here. Crop. Um, and then I might take out... I want to keep this a center exposure. Crop it more. I like this to be in the center because this is exactly what it does. It sits in the center and it looks both ways. Um, very similar poses. That branch there I would have removed if we have time to do the edit. But once again, let's look at how a fine art plugin does with this image without editing. If we edited it just like that, it would have we could have brought some light out of the cheetah onto the cheetah, and it would have been a good um, historic shot or. Um, record shot but black and white look what it does it immediately it does something completely different it just elevates it into a complete different level a total silhouette like that even that can do it's got a bit of distortion of the light on the side with this because it's high structure it accentuates the three thorn bush which is the most prolific shrub in the calari this one brings out more light and you haven't done anything. You've saved probably 45 minutes of edit already by doing two, three different ones that, that looks beautiful. This is a different image altogether. The sun is on the rock in front and they're sitting in the shade of this tree. And they are a silhouette, but this is this is in focus. A push process. Graduate. Could also work as it graduates the light on top. Graduate ND. The fine art process does that, but there's too much halo around that. And what I would like to do is to actually get rid of the center the areas, vignette the image so that it concentrates, accentuates even more of the cheetah. And there's one that will do it, and it's this. And this, with the grain, the silhouette um, of the cheetah and some detail of the shrubs is to me one of the better images. I just love it. Alrighty. Let's carry on. So that's a cheetah. I just do love this cheetahs. I like that rendition as well of the edit. Lines. If you look at all these lines, they attentive, but this one over here is eyes focused, head down. Ears focused, and also this one. Look at the muscle on the shoulders over there. So there's definitely something that we can do with this line. I'm not going to edit him now, Cheetah. Once again, moves towards the water. So you're looking forward to a beautiful silhouette in the water. But one of the problems is there's a beautiful stance pose, but you've got this man-made structure of the water roll and then the rocks that's breaking up the reflection in the water once again, and it's looking away, but shooting along to hope for something to happen. There it starts getting sun in the eyes. Turn the camera quickly to get some form of silhouette. It would have been beautiful if it carried on over here. But at least there's not too much distraction in the water besides this point over here. There's a nice reflection. Only this rock over here that's stuffing up the reflection. Otherwise, and if it's turned it head like over there. The sun is not in the eyes and in the face. That was another one.
So they actually left the water roll just on the right hand side and they're on this stump, which is something that we all look forward to as photographers, for the cheetah to be lifted up on a tree stump. Uh, and, and in this case, the camel thorn, this majestic camel thorn would have looked absolutely spectacular, but we've got a lot of overhanging branches and loose branches. So they play around and we're just shooting along. The light's not that grey, there's, there's a bit of a, a hue on the image. They're actually smelling, playing around. Could have been a nice image if it jumped on top of it. And that's where we want. We're waiting and shooting all along that shutter so that we hope we get something spectacular. There it looks up. It's got a bit of an interesting view, which is fine, but we've got all the branches in front of it. Here's one that's relatively okay if you cut the dead space over here on the right-hand side. And they're off on the ground playing. And I messed it up handheld with, I think, they're not sharp enough. Well, the shutter was too low. Then a falcon that just killed the pigeon. Beautiful pose. Spot in the eye. Some image that you don't really have to do anything to from an edit point of view. It is just beautiful light. You can not change the background. It is what it is. And it's got some not too much blood and gorge. It's got just flower feathers. Black coron. Typical Kalari bird that starts singing and that's where you need sound or a video. Another male lion. These can all be worked into black and whites. Color as well, not too much light in the eye that opens up the eye, but very definitely some black and white fine art images that can come out of that. Too relaxed, eyes too closed, ears back, cool breeze and he doesn't really look all that interested. This is an image that could be worked because of the eye, sort of blinking at us and not looking straight in the camera. Clean pose, so something that you can work on as a portrait, that's even more so because it's blinking at you. There's got a bit of attention straight onto the camera. There as well. Now it's noting the vehicles or the fly. Here you can clearly see it's looking at this fly here. And here's something that I would start looking at. It's that flowers that's probably gone by now, but it's still, nevertheless, it's a very clean background. It's exactly what you want. And over here, you've got image where the one is looking straight up. It's attention is straight on the vehicle or something. And there's definitely something that we can do with that. So we can take this image. So let's look at that. Two young males. Get some of that levels back in there. And already it's beautiful. It's got a sort of a pinkish, pinkish back. And if we take the saturation and just touch the saturation to bring some of the colors out on that, look at the colors of the ears and the, and the hair. No, very little scars on the face. Beautiful young male lines. And so color, beautiful. And if you want to do black and white, that's what the neutral looks like. Also pretty. Overexposed, underexposed. 
high contrast, high structure. The structure brings out too much of the background, which is actually smooth. It's not that bad. High key. You can at a glance see that it doesn't work. The low key doesn't work. Push process, not really. Gradual filter, you wouldn't want to gradual because it, it goes into the... It's not made for this specific image. And that's where the plugins are so beautiful. I found that something like that graduate that comes in sometimes just works on the image um, and sometimes it doesn't. So if you click along, you can look at... That's a typical full-spectrum black and white. And there's the Fine Art plugin, which is very similar. If you try to do a Fine Art yourself and a Fine Art High, and the frame already does something to it. The white, the charcoalish edge with the white and that's what a that's what just a frame does so once you take a picture um, and you select a plug-in like the black and white it is not complete the mount board around it and the and the frame is actually another part of the image and there you can just clearly see there's no frame nothing whatsoever and there is a slight black line and white that actually makes a stand out and then you can of course like the total artistic noir, which I always prefer. That's another one. This line over here was actually, it's the same as the previous images. It is um, also a well-known line. It started walking, the sun was very low and it was getting late and it was walking straight towards us, we standing on the road, it's very close by. It is 1 640th of a second at f4.5, ISO 160. And it was walking and of course you're shooting along to hope that you'll get something but you know a line walking is not really a special shot until it chases up something from in front of it or so on so yeah it's just capturing the image the two vehicles it's got a new mark on the eye there it comes this is very close to the vehicle at probably 200 millimeters look at that sun straight into the eye it's a image that could be worked on and it walks across the road where the sun is already in, or the, the landscape is already in the shade the sun is coming down from right there to here and it's walking away from us so shooting along and I was hoping and praying that it goes towards the edge over there the horizon and the sun was going down and of course if you could wait long enough, you could get a sunset with over there on the horizon with the line and the main in the back. So I was already hoping and praying for something there. But at least if it stood still on the horizon, it would have been something. So there he's seeing something. It's going to the embankment of the Alp River. The wind is blowing nicely and into his face. And this is what I mean. That shot, if it was orange, look how the the grass is burned out, overexposed. And then you can look at that image. If it looked, I could do from a fine art point of view, even if it looked this way, I could have done something. But yeah, they're hoping and praying for him to stand still and the sun going down. But I know that from a creative point of view, there's something that we could do if it stood still or it sat still. So in this day, it's still shooting along. It's walking right on the edge. It could have gone one meter to the other side and the legs would have been gone and it wouldn't look good. So I like the fact that he concentrated. There's a bird captured in flight just in front of it. There it's standing still. And it lies down. So... What do you do with a picture like this? If it lies down, the foreground is a mess. There's grass in front of it. There's bad light there. Um, grass in front of it. You can really, at this stage, not do anything. It's really throwaway shots. 
but stick with it. And what I knew is that if the sun really goes down, that mane is going to light up on the edges. And also that bristle grass, the fine grass, will be overexposed. And it's got some three thorn, which is typical Kalahari. So zoom in a bit. Get rid of that foreground that is a mess over here. And you can see that he's, he's concentrating. Stand up. And I sit down and now I'm starting to get an open, open face. Grass is just here, but he's concentrating. Look at the wind blowing in the mine. I've done this because I saw a white sea-curved cloud line on top of it and hoped that I could expose this. Of course, with this lighting, there's no way to do it except if you do a composite by exposing this part here and took another image by exposing that and to merge the two. But if you look at all this fine grasses and the three thorns, it would have been tremendously difficult. So yeah, the silhouette kills or destroys or got rid of all of this detail in front that takes attention away from the line. It gets rid of that if I, and what I do is, is I've exposed, this is exposed on the line, and there I've exposed for the horizon because I wanted that cloud part of the fine art image. I wanted to show the line, outline of the grasses, and the line, the outline of the grasses and the three thorn, and I wanted that line. The cloud here would have been fine. Um, here it's getting a bit better towards the left, and this. Now I have two lines, two marks that accentuates. If you look at that, and that, there it turns away and it gave me two shots. And it gave me the shot only, which is the shot that helped us create a beautiful image. If I just zoom in, you can look at this. You already got, you got some picture. This light over here doesn't doesn't work. So, the silhouette, and and this line over here was the the image that I that I wanted. So even if you, even if you, cropped it over there, look at that silhouette image. Let's look at levels. I don't really want to do levels. I want to. This shot is made for one thing and it's made for black and white. So, as soon as you do the black and white, let's see what the reds does. It brings out the whites. We don't want anything from a light point of view to be brought out. We want it washed out. So, that's. See what it does? If you push the curve, it just gives it more of a silhouette. But I prefer the one where the cloud is accentuated. So there's the plugins again. That's the neutral. Let's go down. That's beautiful. Even even the underexposed is absolutely fantastic because look 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 how it accentuates the grasses in front of the line, the two flies another high contrast image structure one brings out some of the distortion there the clouds comes out the low key also that line of cloud becomes more clear and also over there so this is a typical moonlit shot where the lines lying on the moon the moon shines behind its head and that and it can be used and it's interpreted psycho psychologically as a moonshot. Look at all the plugins, quite different. I wouldn't use any of that where it shows the line that's supposed to be a silhouette. And once again, that's the one that I select because it brings out that over there. 
it vignettes it and it concentrates in this part. If that was just even blue, gray or white, not the same, but there's something that this hat figure does with the clouds um, with a line in it that I just absolutely adore. So that's it. Let's finish off with that line image and see you next time with a follow-up of exactly the same film strip.